I am so tired of waiting. So much waiting. All the waiting. I'm so tired of waiting. I'm recording on this drizzly Friday morning with 50 tabs open, waiting for this election to end. Everything I'm watching has decided except the presidential election. And I wanna be one of those Zen people who is chill about the whole thing, checking in once a day or knowing, just ignoring it, knowing that, you know, somebody's gonna tell me when it's decided. <laughs> but that's not me, at, at least not this year, probably not any year if I'm honest. So I wait, distracted, worried, hopeful. I want to know the outcome and I'm anxious about it. In the background, I fret about how we pick up the pieces when there is a decision. As divisions grow, how do we find a middle ground and work together? If a worldwide pandemic, an easy and common enemy doesn't bind us together, is there anything that can? And if we don't work our way toward one another, I'm not sure how we proceed as a nation. But right now, the presidential election has all of my attention. So I wait, and I worry, and I pray. Come, Lord Jesus. Come walk with us. Come and hold us while we wait. Jesus talked to us about waiting in many ways and in this parable. There were 10 bridesmaids and they took their lamps to meet the bridegroom, but he was delayed. Five of them planned ahead and brought extra oil, but five did not. The foolish ones had to go looking for more oil and they missed it when the bridegroom called for them. Jesus told them to be ready and because they weren't, they missed their opportunity. They missed it. For months, the news media has warned us that it might take days for the election to resolve. Yet many of us weren't ready or maybe just are too anxious to endure the waiting without squirming. And in the discomfort, I keep praying that prayer. Come on, Jesus, walk with us. And there is a tiny earnest voice that keeps replying, I am here. We as Christian people were made for this. We as a people have been waiting for 2000 years for Jesus to return. We are just weeks from Advent when the modern church remembers longing for the Christ child as we wait in our time for Jesus's return. This is this year we get to live with the Advent waiting for much longer, not as children waiting for the hard to contain expectation for Christmas morning, but with the longing for safety and normalcy and resolution. In truth, this is probably more like the kind of waiting they did 2000 years ago. You and I, we know what happens at Christmas and real or not, we can picture it the stable and the angel and the serenity of Mary, all of that. It's sweet and beautiful and nostalgic. But our spiritual ancestors were persecuted and suffered for their faith, making them yearn for the Messiah in a way that is hard for us to feel. Advent is a reminder that we waited then and we wait still. It is important and different for us than it was immediately for Jesus's was immediately after Jesus's resurrection. We know what it looked like the first time and many creative people have suggested what it might look like the second time, you know, clouds and harps or terrifying left behind images. This year, this election cycle, this pandemic, this stay at home time, this longing for something that we can kind of imagine, but also not at all, this is more like the Christian longing of our tradition. Though it has been months since we gathered together and said the Eucharistic prayer, each Sunday when we do say the Eucharistic prayer, 
we say some variation of the memorial acclamation. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. As uncomfortable as I find all this waiting, we were made for this. We were formed by this. We know that there is a next, but we don't know what it looks like. Paul said, for now we see dimly in a mirror, but then face to face. There are people who have guessed, and I often find their guesses saccharine or terrifying, as I mentioned, white robes and gaudy gold gates, or me and or my loved ones left behind to fight for it, Hunger Games style. Scripture says that the kingdom of God will make all things new. So anytime my mind starts to go that way, I remind myself of what Paul said. I don't stress much about the next spiritual chapter. I can't know and I can't control it. So I rest in Paul's words to the Hebrews. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us. God surrounds us through this life and the one to come. There it is, that tiny, earnest voice. I am here. Maybe the election will be resolved by Sunday when we worship together. I hope so. I hope so. But Biden or Trump, year of our Lord 34 or year of our Lord 2020, our mission remains the same. Love God and love your neighbor as yourself. And if we were all together, I would make you say it with me. Love God and love your neighbor as yourself. Friends, we were made for this. We were trained by this. Every week we remember and remind ourselves that we were made and trained for this. And Biden or Trump, we must continue to fight for those in need, those who are sick, to give voice to the voiceless, to care for the gifts bestowed on us, to be kind and prayerful. These things don't change. Jesus is with us. God surrounds us. The Spirit breathes through us. Our marching orders haven't changed, and they are simple and so hard, hard enough that they require all of our attention. So let us wait for the outcome of the election, but more importantly, for the second coming of Christ. Let us prepare our lamps by doing the work and be ready for the grace of God that is as it is showered upon us and will in the end shepherd us into the next life.